live from downtown Detroit. Local 4 News at 5 starts now. A man in the hospital right now after being attacked by two dogs in Highland Park. And wait until you see what it took to get those dogs under control. Police say this man used a dating app to lure men for murder. But we'll begin with a story developing right now in Ypsilanti Township. Deputies there say a husband made a fatal mistake that left his wife dead. Glad you're with us for Local 4 News at 5. They say that man was asleep when he thought he heard and saw an intruder in his house. Now, he says he realized only after firing a fatal shot that the intruder was actually his wife. It happened early Thursday morning inside a home on DeSoto near Ecorse Road and Tyler. Let's get to Jermont Terry. He's live in that neighborhood. Jermont, is that husband in police custody now? Steve, he's been locked up since the shooting happened, and he's expected to be released very soon. Now, prosecutors will have to determine whether or not they believe what the husband said happened inside this home. Now, over my shoulder, you can see that there are security cameras outside, but this shooting happened inside and was not caught on camera. Investigators only called after the fatal shot. As a husband slept inside this house in DeSolo near Willow Run in Ypsilanti Township, a husband told investigators he thought someone other than his wife and two children was inside. He grabs his weapon, he uh, goes to look, and what he sees is a shadowy figure. He pulls the trigger. Unfortunately, he winds up killing his wife. Derek Jackson with the Washington County Sheriff's Office says the man kept that weapon near his bed. When he heard the noise, he had no reason to believe it was his wife in another part of the house at 1.30 in the morning. The way he reports it is that um, the entire family was asleep. They were all in their beds. Um, he thought that his wife was next to him. It's unclear how many times the husband shot his wife, but his injuries killed her instantly. All the while, the couple's two and four-year-olds were in the next room. The husband called 911 after learning it was his wife and not an intruder he shot. The husband was taken into custody as, in, as detectives verify his story. Our job is really to gather all the facts, so the investigators are just gathering all the facts. He was taken into custody yesterday because obviously a murder had happened. Um, it is up to the prosecutor to decide if or what charges may be. On the surface, this appears to be a horrible accident. Jackson says there's no indication the couple had any marital problems, but they are looking into that. He says this goes back to gun safety and knowing when to pull out that weapon. That's just how important it is uh, when you have a weapon in your home, that decision-making process. Now, investigators with the Washtenaw County Sheriff's Office tell me that the husband has been very emotional ever since this incident took place. As for those two children, they've been placed with additional family. Reporting live in Ypsilanti Township tonight, Jamal Terry, Local 4. Our other top story tonight, police say a man used the dating app Grinder to lure two men. He then robbed and shot them, killing one. Today, 26-year-old Demetrius Nelson was arraigned on a charge of first-degree murder along with a long list of other charges in connection with two attacks. Coco McAvoy was in the courtroom. State your full name, please. Nelson. Demetrius Nelson showing no emotion in court today, even smiling from ear to ear in his mugshot, though he's facing very serious charges. Count one, homicide, felony murder. Nelson is accused of a heinous crime. Police say he used the Grinder app to track down Malcolm Drake and Brian Anderson. Nelson allegedly targeted them because they were gay and shot them both during an attempted robbery. Drake was critically injured. Anderson did not survive. He was, he was just so full of life. Shelby Jackson and Dominique Dew had a close bond with Anderson and describe him as a light. And just to take someone with that much life who had so much more to give, you know, it hurts. The people who love Anderson are remembering him for who he was. Oh, a man of strong faith who served as a leader at the Steadfast Baptist Church in Detroit. He still wanted to do so much more. He felt as if he wasn't doing enough and he wanted to start a mentor program. But they don't have harsh words for Nelson. In fact, they forgive him. I know he, even with what happened, he would forgive him. You know, that's, that's the kind of heart he had. Um, so I know that I have to live on through him. And Anderson will be laid to rest tomorrow and will, of course, be keeping track of this case because Nelson will be back in court next week. Back to you. We sure will. All right, Coco. 
Other news this afternoon, the Michigan Attorney General is looking into deleted emails inside Mayor Duggan's administration. The AG and the City Inspector General both researching an allegation that city officials were told to delete emails related to the Make Your Date Foundation. Both offices were already investigating Make Your Date, receiving more than $350,000 in city-connected grant money. That's because of criticism around the relationship between Mayor Duggan and the foundation's director, Dr. Sonia Hassan. The city released a statement saying the emails were recovered and have been turned over to investigators. A neighborhood in Highland Park on edge tonight after a man is bitten by a dog. As the dogs roamed, police in the area even told our crews to stay inside the news van over fears they could attack again. They even tried tossing cold cuts to the dogs to get them under control. Well, it's all happening on Pasadena near the Lodge and Davison. Let's get out to Sean Lay. He is live at Henry Ford Hospital where that biting victim was taken. Sean, how's he doing? Taken here a short time ago, Steve. Here's the deal. Highland Park's police chief saying that he was alert, but was indeed attacked by these two dogs the police tonight are calling vicious. <laughs> Absolutely wild. Only local four cameras are there as police in Highland Park work to get two dogs they are calling vicious under control. <laughs> police even telling our photographer to stay in the news van as the dogs ran wild across Pasadena between Woodward and Hamilton. Dogs that are well known as a danger in this area. They have been a problem. We, we have been scared to walk down the sidewalk. We're told the dogs have attacked before. This time, it was a man in his 30s who was bitten. Follow along as police first drove the neighborhood looking for the dogs. Then used sirens to get their attention. Police vehicles used to box the dogs in. A fence at the home had to be fixed to keep them in. Then officers brought in baloney to lure the dogs closer to them. Next up, this guy, a dog whisperer of sorts, offering snossages. That's when the owner rushed through this scene, the dogs following her into her house. She surrendered both of them. They don't bite. Yeah, they, they claim one of the dogs bit him, but but it wasn't a child that was bit. It was a, it was a, it was a teenager dog. Ooh, a teenager. How, however old he was, he wasn't a child. It's uh, very sad, but dog owners need to be responsible. Back here live, let's get to that dog owner tonight. Highland Park's police chief tells me she's been hit with three citations, including having vicious animals and letting them run wild. What happens to the dogs depends on whether or not she can provide a vaccination records to the police. And time is ticking on that tonight, Steve. Yeah, Sean, we understand even the mailman says it won't deliver to that house. Has that changed? He came right up on his route and stopped and said that house where all the police he was watching it with us and said, yeah, I won't deliver to that house because of those dogs. Yeah, well, I don't blame him. Thank you, Sean. Tropical storm Barry is moving across the Gulf of Mexico and gaining strength. Sadly, take a look at the storm from the International Space Station posted uh, as this video of the storm gaining steam as it turns its way around. And as it gets closer to shore, the Gulf Coast bracing for the first hit. Barry now is still considered a tropical storm, but it could reach hurricane status by the time it hits land. Louisiana gearing up for a triple threat. The area has already seen the Mississippi River much higher than usual, and there is a chance that the levees won't hold up. Look, there are three ways Louisiana floods. Storm surge, high rivers, and rain. We're going to have all three. Yeah, a triple threat. The National Guard has already been called in. They're working to roll out temporary barricades. Another member of President Trump's cabinet is out. Just days after Labor Secretary Alex Acosta defended himself for his handling of a controversial sex case involving Jeffrey Epstein, Acosta has turned in his resignation. I called the president this morning. I told him that I thought the right thing was to step aside. You know, cabinet positions our temporary trust. It would be selfish for me to stay in this position and continue talking about a case that's 12 years old. His resignation comes as he faces heavy criticism over his role in reaching a secret plea deal with Jeffrey Epstein more than a decade ago. Acosta's deputy will take over starting next week. 
New fallout tonight after a Detroit police commissioner Thank ended up in you. handcuffs wow, during a meeting last night over facial recognition technology. This is video of Willie Burton being led away and into a squad car after things got pretty ugly. As Larry Spruill shows us today, Burton took to the airwaves to speak his piece. These are dangerous times that we are living in in the city of Detroit. Yesterday, this happened to me. T tomorrow, this can happen to you. Bold words coming from Police Commissioner Willie Burton Friday morning. Burton hit the 9:10 a.m. Superstation airwaves hours after he was arrested Thursday night during a police commissioner meeting. Local four cameras there and rolling as police arrested and escorted Commissioner Burton out in handcuffs after board chair Lisa Carter ruled him out of order several times. The way they carried me out of there was just wrong. Burton said he was injured during the chaos. You know, I, I hit my head um, when they pulled me out of my chair. They just treated me like a criminal. Now this all happened during an intense conversation about the city using facial recognition technology and street cameras. Many feel it crosses a line of privacy and others feel it could deter crime in a big way. During the meeting, Commissioner Burton voiced his concerns loud and clear. Friday, he echoed those same concerns on the radio. When he installed these cameras, if one person becomes misidentified through facial recognition, and don't have the resources for a good legal defense, it affects all of us. And I did reach out to Police Chief James Craig about these charges and his office declined to comment. I also reached out to Commissioner Burton to see if I can talk to him one-on-one -on, -one on camera. He referred me to his spokesperson. I called his spokesperson, I identified myself. He simply hung up the phone. We're allowed tonight. Larry Spruill, Local 4. Okay, Larry. The Wayne County prosecutor says it's a crime that is beyond tragic. Just horrible. New tonight, what we're learning about a shocking motive as a man is formally charged in a triple shooting involving a child. Suffering from a summer sinus infection? Well, lots of people are. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Tonight at 5, see what's causing so much sinus misery right now and what else is going around near you. And I'm meteorologist Andrew Humphrey. Beautiful blue skies overhead. And with that, it's getting warmer. Still comfortable. Temperatures in the upper 70s. Doesn't feel much hotter. This weekend, different story. And what about Tropical Storm Barry? I've got the latest track coming up. Lots of things to do in Metro Detroit this weekend, like an art fair. It should have never happened uh, with this idiot fleeing the police and driving in the reckless way he did. But this art fair has a particularly charitable purpose. It's actually quite a sad story they're trying to turn upside down. We'll tell you where. 